Great. So good afternoon um, or good morning if you're um, watching in the States. Uh, good evening if you're watching somewhere in the Far East. Um, we're um, just starting session two of the full 2016 Sonokesis Digital Classics module, which is on the theme of digital history and archaeology. And this week we're uh, extremely pleased to be joined by Sebastian Heath from the Institute for the Study of the Ancient World in New York University, who's going to um, present uh, some issues around 3D imaging, 3D modeling and uh, photogrammetry um, and some of the tools and software and other approaches um, that, uh, that that enables us to bring to material culture and, uh, and objects and so forth. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll hand over to, to you, Sebastian. Great. Um, greetings, uh, I guess. Again, um, I'm Sebastian Heath. Uh, very happy to be here. I am in New York, uh, wherever you are. I hope uh, things are going well there. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about 3D modeling. Uh, it's the first of two sessions, and I will very quickly go to sharing my screen, and we will follow through on links. Uh, I'm sure some of those links won't work, but hopefully enough of them will so that you guys get a sense of the current, uh, just a brief sense of, of a little bit of what is going on in 3D. Um, it is great that this is just the first session. I will make reference to the fact that there's a second session on 3D um, by Valeria Vitale, and I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully our, um, the, the, our, our sessions work well together. Um, but before I share the screen, let me just step back and introduce myself a little bit. I am a Roman archeologist. I work in the field currently in uh, Greece. Um, for a long time, however, I have been very interested in the potential of digital tools to change, not just what archeologists do in the field, but how it is that we communicate our results. And in the last five or six years, um, 3D technologies have gone from being uh, very expensive and requiring specialized software and hardware to being um, available to a wide range of people, both in terms of the creation of data and then the dissemination, dissemination of that. And if I can introduce that idea of a workflow, Maybe not a specific workflow, because all your machines are different and all your, your exact computing environment is different. But the idea that it is possible to um, create 3D data and then share it, um, I will have succeeded. There will be multiple sort of permutations of that workflow. Um, you can download 3D data and do something with it and then share that, all of which I hope lead to some sense that um, data can be part of working with and thinking about the material culture of the ancient world, that it really has become an important uh, tool. And so it's really happy to see it on the syllabus for uh, this module or what I might call a course um, in the United States. So um, again, uh, I will dive right in. Uh, any hesitance you hear in my voice is I'm just like thinking ahead. What are the links that aren't going to work? Only one way to find out. Let's go. So I'm going to share my screen, uh, the entire thing. I am clicking on start screen share, which I think may set up a feedback loop. So I am hiding that. And um, hopefully you can see uh, everything. Gabby, let me know. Uh, interrupt if, if people are not able to see uh, my screen. So I start out just um, very briefly um, at the wiki page. And again, noting that I think it's session four will be 3D modeling and computer aided design. Hopefully um, these two sessions work well together. But I would be grateful if people would click over to the session outline. Or if you're following later, um, this is where I'm going. Session outline, I have it set up in a tab right here. And this is what I am going to be talking about uh, today. Flowing down, major, the major divisions are types of 3D data, 3D data on the internet, making 3D data, using, uh, we'll have talked about that a little bit by the time we get there, and then just a few links. Um, and uh, if you are coming back in Tuesday or maybe uh, you know, ne next week or maybe even further along, this document might, might look a little bit different, um, but uh, this should largely be the same. And I've chosen a Google Doc rather than a presentation 
just to make it a little bit easier to find the links that are on here. Um, uh, I hope that works. Everything about teaching in this way is an experiment, so I welcome feedback on whether you would have preferred some kind of uh, presentation rather than a document. Okay, so let us um, first uh, start out with uh, types of 3D data. And I mean in this section to make uh, a broad distinction between um, 3D vector drawings and dense, mes dense meshes with photorealistic textures. Uh, there are other ways of dividing up types of 3D data, but that's our rubric for right now. Um, for 3D vector drawings, I'm actually looking ahead to the second session of, the, uh, of, of 3D in this, in this module. And rather than uh, click right here, I hope it makes sense that I have this tab preloaded. Pre um, we are going to go into a website called the 3D Warehouse, which is associated with a program called SketchUp, which you will be looking at in two weeks. Um, I have already clicked on this symbol right here and loaded this um, basic but already useful model of a Roman house, quite an abstract representation of it. And what I want to highlight here is that this is not any one house in particular. These are not real stones. They probably should be brick. These are not actual roof tiles here, but these are straight lines. So it's a very uh, schematic representation, an efficient representation in terms of file size of a very idealized drawing of a house. So you can come here, and I won't muck around with uh, moving things around a bit, but this is essentially a 2D drawing, except it's cool that we can rotate things. Um, that is essentially all I'm going to say, because again, I suspect um, that two weeks from now, you will go into this more. But do keep in mind that there is this just other branch of 3D modeling, which is about drawing stuff out of an abstract ideal rather than modeling, very closely modeling the real world as it is, to put things um, a little bit too simply. So now to increase the likelihood of things not crashing and spring up memory, I'm going to close this tab and we will come back to here. Um, our focus today is what I have called um, dense meshes with photorealistic textures. Uh, let's go look at exam an example. Again, I'm not gonna click on this link because I have preloaded it, but you are welcome to either now or in the time shifted world that this module exists in. And um, if you do that, you will come to a 3D model of a marble portrait head of uh, the Roman Emperor Augustus um, that is now, that, that physical object is now in the Getty Villa in um, Los Angeles. Um, I am using this as an example to talk about what is the underlying digital representation that we as humans are looking at and that digital representation is doing a pretty decent job of communicating just the visual aspects of this object. I'm rotating it back and forth. You should think, ah, okay, were I to see this, it, you know, I'd get a, I'd have a sense of what it would be like were I to see it. So what is a uh, 3D model? I'm gonna come back to my document here and just very quickly say that we're gonna go over two aspects. Um, first, interacting with these things, and I'd like you to keep in uh, mind rotate, pan, and zoom, and then uh, the components of a 3D model, and I'm gonna mention these terms, vertices, edges, mesh, and faces. All right, back to the model. Um, here it is. Just in terms of how one interacts with a model, I have been rotating it. I'm doing this by clicking on the screen and dragging my mouse. People may be able to do that as well. I hope that is a um, way of interacting that, that makes sense uh, in terms of what I'm trying to achieve by doing that and why I might want to. Here's Augustus's face full on, looking to the side. Um, if I click uh, here, you will get um, a little 
instructions, help on how to do things. And you'll see um, rotate, zoom, and pan. I won't talk about focus and reset here. Um, so if I hold down the X key, uh, I am zooming in and out, and then go back to the instructions. And if I hold down the C key, uh, I am panning, that is moving back and forward. And um, it is generally the case that a combination of rotating, zooming, and panning should be able to get you to any perspective on an object, except of course it can be slightly different. Some programs, and we'll come up against this, limit how much you can rotate, all that kind of stuff. Um, rotate, pan, and zoom, those are essentially universal concepts in interacting with 3D models. Uh, on a screen via a computer. Um, unfortunately, the key combinations that are used to do that are very, very different. I sort of make no attempt to memorize all the different ones, and so I'm sure I will come across in this next uh, 50 minutes or so where I'm clicking on the thing and you're hearing me grumbling because I'm hitting the C in the wrong thing. Um, uh, I, I put it that way because that's just a fact of life doing um, 3D in 2016. All the programs have slightly different combinations and you just got to get used to that and, 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 and relax and not get too frustrated with things. Um, Okay, back to the idea of what do we have. So here's a representation of the model, which again, or in a, a rendering that is taking digital data and putting it on your screen, uh, which is communicating um, a reasonably rich sense of what the original object is. Um, how does that work? Um, I can, in this website, P3DIN, um, if that's perhaps P3DIN or P3DIN, however you want to pronounce it, um, I can change the rendering. And I'm coming down to this icon here, wire, in which if I zoom in, you will see that the 3D shape of this portrait is defined by, represented by points, with XYZ coordinates in a 3D space. Those points, a more technical term for those points is vertices. Each of those points will have connections to its nearest neighbor. Those connections are called edges. Um, and if we think of three of these edges all coming together, that space is called a face. And so, one way of thinking of this object is as a mesh of vertices connected by edges that create faces that define the shape of an object. And when I come and turn on the smooth view, we get what is called a photorealistic texture over that. And um, human brain being the human brain, it is desperately trying, all of our brains are desperately trying to turn this into a realistic uh, looking object to understand what they are looking at. And so that relatively sparse information, back to wire. I can even show you the solid view. But if I put a continuous tone color on it, um, we get a nice model. Um, and uh, well, you're seeing, um, yes, I do know Jack Davis. Hopefully that will go away. Facebook is pestering me. Um, uh, so yes, um, it doesn't take all that much to convince a human that it is looking at, that, that she or he is looking at something in the real world, which is why this whole thing can work. This whole 3D um, thing can work is because we can we can create um, uh, we can create digital information that makes us think we're looking at real objects. Um, let me come back to my outline, uh, vertices, edges. Yeah, and so we are going to look um, in a little bit at how it is that one options for making this. And uh, we'll be a little bit abstract. Um, we will also dive in and look at uh, specific software. This will be my first opportunity to say that um, 
I don't want to dwell too much on exactly where to click because your screen, your computer is going to look different. There are just a gazillion permutations of software and operating system and computer and licensing and institutional access to all of the above um, that I'm going to just dive right in. And I hope that those of you who are uh, looking at this on your own will do the same and dive in or that instructors will uh, take time to create a context for their students um, to figure out how to do this because making models is fun and and as I said last week in the in the introduction um, uh, it'd be great if uh, at the end of this there are more people who have a sense of how to make more models and uh, also some people who actually can do it um, so uh, just as a review perhaps of what we know right now as well as dipping our toes into the world of 3d data that is out there um, 3D, the uses of 3D data that are out there. Um, I just very quickly go to an article that came through my uh, inbox. Uh, some, some service announced it to me. 3D modeling reveals the beauty of Pompeii before its destruction. Um, I encourage you to take a look at this either by reading the text around it or perhaps going straight to the YouTube uh, videos. I want to just come to the start of this video um, and um, let me turn I'm going to turn my speaker down uh, come to the start of this video and here you can see we have a textured model so that's a real that is an actual building in Pompeii and we are moving through a, a 3d model that shows its state plan and in just a little bit I believe uh, yeah we will move to that um, more abstract drawing but that drawing is of course directly inspired by the um, model that they have of the actual world but also incorporating our understanding of what a roman house would look like this happens to be a house that we know quite a bit about i won't allow myself to be delayed by that uh, easily read the article you can easily find information um, uh, on the internet but just that distinction between um, making what we might traditionally call a 3D state plan, but then moving that into an interpretive drawing. Um, again, keep that in mind, and I think you will get practical practice in the distinction between those these two approaches um, in two weeks from now. So let me um, come back to my uh, outline and then say um, very, very briefly on um, file formats. There are many for uh, 3D. I don't want to get too distracted by them. I will just give you a little bit of a heads up. Um, I've talked about there being models or photorealistic textures. There are a lot of models out there that don't have that continuous tone texture information. Um, and uh, here, it's going to sit here and load. And Thingiverse is a site that uh, is a source of those. Those are in uh, frequently in a file format with the, the extension STL, just called an STL file. This is a somewhat older format in 3D, in the 3D world, and it is for printing. And since there was a period when uh, 3D printers could not print in color, there was no need to record the color information. So there are a lot of STL files out there. If you download one, perhaps don't be frustrated that you're not getting the, the um, uh, color information. However, that might sound like a critique. I don't mean it in any way as such thing ever type in lots of terms up here and find um, 3D information that you can download for free. The thing file section is where you want to go to. And here you can see you can download a high resolution of this model of the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Go out and play uh, will be things that I say again and again. And look, I seemed to have two copies of that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this up for just a second in case I come back to it. Um, great. That is where I want to be. Um, other file formats that you will frequently come across. PLY, Stanford PLY, Waveform, OBJ, or Collada. Those do capture the, uh, those can, if, if color information is available, those can capture it. Uh, you're, you will come across those frequently. Again, I don't want to get too delayed on file formats. Uh, individual construct, instructors can decide uh, how much they want to dive into that. Um, I will uh, note briefly, 
that yes, you can embed 3D information in PDF files, but as I say, I will read what I plead, but please don't do that as an archival practice. Um, uh, it just makes, it's, it's, it's a drag. Um, so, so stay away from uh, 3D um, embedded in PDF. My hope is that over the course of this term, the idea of open formats that are easy for both computers and humans to use is a, is a motif. There are sessions where that will be better to focus on that, but then reach back in your minds and say, oh yes, Sebastian Heath told us to not use PDFs for 3D, and now I have a better understanding of why. Um, okay, uh, and then I do want to um, say that for the 3D class upcoming in two weeks, um, Collada, I understand, is going to be a preferred file format for the workflows you discuss there. And for people who do make 3D models and would like to be a little bit ahead of the game for participating in that session, um, explore how it is that you can export your model um, in Collada format. And perhaps if we have time for questions, I can um, sort of point you in a few directions in that. But um, Collada is a, is a recent, um, relatively recent, it's been around for a while, but, but, but in the, the latter stages of developing um, techniques and formats for making um, 3D data more interchangeable, so it is a good target to, uh, to have in mind. Um, okay. 3D data on the internet. Uh, there is a lot of it. There is a growing amount of it, and this is generally a good thing. Um, in the reading uh, that I gave you in the Visions of Substance volume, I called myself an optimist. I am. Um, you know, the world is becoming a better place because more people are sharing 3D models. That doesn't mean that we oughtn't to critique how they are doing it. Um, there are better and worse ways. Don't use PDFs. Um, but it is a good thing, and, and it, is, it is exciting. And, and, and everybody who's putting up 3D data is to be congratulated. Um, one of the earlier ones that uh, came across was this uh, gallery here. Back when I was looking for these, please to see this. I don't remember the exact date for how long it's been. Up. The site has been up, but the Petri Museum uh, UCL project, uh, very happy to give them a shout out for, for having been on the forward edge of making 3D data um, available. Um, this is just one of a number of museum galleries that show you models, um, let you click through and embedded within uh, a website. And I hope um, not requiring a plugin for anybody. Of course, not coming up. Let's see. Give it a little bit of time. Ah, yes, good. You know, stay calm. Stay calm and wait. Yes, good. Fantastic. Face from a coffin. The young woman wears an elaborate wig. Um, uh, of course, we can click. I am clicking. I am rotating. There is a question in here, and you can see uh, rotate, zoom, move move or pan uh and so i can just um just very quickly i'll show you uh, yes look it works you don't you can't see me doing this but i am clicking on my arrow key and moving it back and forth so again i can position myself anywhere in relation to this um i like the fact that there is a link to the um uh museum catalog so you so so that um uh, 3d model is embedded in the context of the internet which can provide um additional model uh information about it um that's terrific mummy mask skin area um i believe if i introduction details what is that uh no that's um that's more about this piece somewhere i believe it said that this was a uh um Third intermediary period, I think so. So, but it'd be nice. Uh, yes, third intermediate period, right there, right in front of me. Um, if I remember correctly, that's a thousand to a seven hundred BC. But I'm uh, happy to be embarrassed and get this wrong because you can quickly select that, Google it, and uh, find it on Wikipedia. Um, perhaps they should have said that themselves. All of this critiquing how we're, we're well beyond critiquing how 3D data is on the internet. We're critiquing museum data on the internet, but that's good. 3D data is integrated into how 
places, how institutions are are representing what they have in their collection, and uh, and it is terrific to see that happening. I will just make the very basic point: this is a richer, I will dare say, better representation of this object than it's singly a two D photograph. 2D photographs will remain important to be able to freeze a particular view and communicate that is great in combination. All types of data are welcome and I'm very glad to uh, see them. Um, all right, I am gonna close this now. Um, uh, all right. <laughs> this right here is an example of a museum creating its own gallery. In the last year or so, the site sketchfab.com has really uh, leapt ahead in being a um, default, shall we say, or an easily choosable uh, mechanism for sharing 3D models. Um, it has the advantage of being a place where they are working on the functionality associated with its display of models, so not every museum has to do itself. Um, we ought to think, are we giving over to a commercial enterprise too much, a too great a role in the access um, to uh, information? Um, but that is not a conversation unique to 3D data. And again, I hope that's a, a theme that is explored um, throughout the uh, term of this module. Um, so the British Museum doing a very nice job of putting models online. Uh, the British Museum also hosts a site, micropass.org, by my good friend and colleague, Dan Pett. Um, you can find that as well, also using Sketchfab to put material on. Um, and this will load eventually. Uh, yes, good. And you'll get a low res version of it, but shortly it will snap into focus. Uh, here we are. I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna leave it um, loaded. Um, I also want to, so, so those are 3D models of objects, and you have seen that in um, everything I've done so far. I do want to note that there are also 3D models of archaeological contexts that are available on the internet. Somewhat randomly chose uh, a Sketchfab account that I know to be putting up um, a good uh, a good range of archaeological contexts, and again, a shout out to the Department of Archaeology at Ghent University and all of their uh, all of their partners. Really nice to see that this is going on. Again, I can click in and see. Um, click through. Let's try this. There, that one is working. We'll pause. I just want to show you this as a nice use of a 3D model in archaeology, clearly, as this context was excavated, 3D models were made along the way. And this all this is these these are not different layers. These are the same layer once you get down to here at different times of excavation. It also allows me to highlight an aspect of Sketchfab in which it allows you to apply annotations to models, um, which it will say this model is an attempt to visualize the excavation process. I can come here and, oh, I thought it would show me a menu. I'm not sure why that, that is not, uh, in which it would show me these different ones, but I'll just click on them. We can go to three and get a close up of uh, the bricks being excavated, but a section is left in place. Can I come down and um, here I'll zo oops. zoom back out, I hope, and go to the fourth annotation. Can I get it there? Yes, and uh, unearth. I'm not gonna click on all of them, but this is, um, I think, a useful illustration of the functionality that is available if you use Sketchfab as your mechanism for displaying um, 3D information. Um, and coming back to here, uh, I am going to skip over this and not do this live, um, may come back to it. But yeah, it's pretty trivial to acquire some 3D data, 
to download it and to reload it, to reload it up into Sketchfab in your own account and to apply your own annotations. I will have a pause to stress one thing. That first part of that workflow where I say to acquire information, that does mean that institutions, providers of 3D data, ought to let you do that. Or in order to enable people to do things, they need to do that. And I probably uh, showed my cards a little bit. Um, I wish more institutions would do that. And I, again, congratulate the British Museum for enabling download. If you are looking at this link right now, you might not see this download button. I believe it's the case that you need to sign up for a Sketchfab account and to um, uh, sign up for a Sketchfab account and log in in order for this to be enabled. But perhaps that's not the not the case. I'm not going to log out right now and try that. But um, and 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 we there can be a discussion. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, but fundamentally, that seems to be a detail. The British Museum is allowing their 3D information to be downloaded and people to do things with it. And again, I'm I'm very happy to see that. And we may be able to come back to that um, uh, just a little bit. Um, all right, I'm going to close that again close that um on that idea of how accessible um 3d data is uh wikipedia i think perhaps because they're hoping that file formats settle down uh, you can get some 3d data off of it but it hasn't really um made itself a hub of acquiring 3d data in the way it has made itself a hub of acquiring images uh, but we are probably as i indicated on a trajectory towards that happening. Um, GitHub, a site that is perhaps known to people, um, it does a nice job of making STL files available. And if you upload your STL file available, it will automatically be rendered. Um, I'm sure Tom and I, Tom Elliott and I, when we return to you to talk about uh, structured data, GitHub will appear again. But I suspect it may well also be mentioned. Um, take this as a somewhat um, random uh, indication that you know 3D is making its way into the internet, and you can expect um, uh, more sites to be able to handle it, and which means it more important that 3D data is acquirable, that people can do things with it. Um, but that's also I'll use that as a segue. It is important that there be tools for making your own 3D data. Um, once again, step back. Uh, just as at the top, I talked about the distinction between um, a, a drawing a approach to 3D data, vectorized, uh, ve vectorized 3D data, which you'll use with uh, SketchUp, um, and then the dense meshes with photorealistic textures. Um, I can divide how it is one makes 3D data into uh, two um, major divisions. Um, hardware scanners that in some form cast light upon an object and use the reflection of that object to determine shape and or color. Um, I'm actually not going to click through on these, but a matter of, of sort of uh, non-partiality, Artec and Creoform are two major um, vendors, um, manufacturers of, of 3D scanners. Uh, their scanners tend to cost a lot, certainly, you know, $5,000 and, and as much as you want to play, pay into the six figures. There are many other makers of, of hardware scanners. Um, I also uh, have a link to a YouTube video on less expensive options. Um, some of those options include using your iPhone um, and, you know, let us all hope that five years from now, all our phones, just as they can take pictures, all have are, are 3D aware, and you can wave them around and make a make a 3D model of the room that you're in. And it may not even take five years. Again, a tangent off of this discussion, we could go and show how their Google is making phones that can all but do that uh, right now. But that's not my focus um, in terms of making 3D data. Really, my um, focus is the what you can try at home right now, uh, and that is photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is the process of uh, taking many pictures of a room or an object and compiling those photographs together um, 
and deriving a 3D model from them. Uh, and, but it's not you who has to derive the 3D model. Fortunately, as I will demonstrate, um, computers have become really quite good at doing this. And that's um, a focus of probably the next 15 to 20 minutes. We'll see how long it takes um, of this talk. I really want to uh, show you just a hint at how this has done, but it will be just, I'm gonna stress again and again and again, your computing experience will be different um, uh, depending on operating system and exact um, your, the exact details of your of your setup. Um, so within the uh, world of photogrammetry, which you'll soon um, see uh, by experience, come to understand um, how it can work. Um, there's uh, a software, Agisoft PhotoScan, and I'll click through on the installer. Um, you can download this and ask them for a 30-day trial license. Uh, of the full version. That is one way of um, making a 3D model, and I will show that um, on the screen right here in the next few minutes. Um, and then uh, that's that you download an app, and all the processing happens on your machine. Um, there is also Autodesk Remake. And I know, I think that Gabby is going to have his students um, try that out. That, a, a, an easy way to conceive of that is as a, a software that you download, but the processing in general is happening uh, in the cloud. Um, I will show you the Mac version, which is promotionally free for a limited version. It very much looks like a, it's a beta and it's not a full on Mac interface. Um, I will say this now and I will say it again, NYU, my institution, has a site license for all Autodesk software. Um, so again, my exactly what I'm showing you will probably be just a little bit different from how it would look for you if you download the promotionally free or the Windows version and use free versus pro, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, be ready to have a, a confident approach to what it is that you see in your screen and to move ahead uh, trying to make things work. And don't worry that they don't look exactly like what you see on um, my screen. I'm going to clo close that window, um, come back to here. Um, OK. So I am first going to start with Remake. Um, for those of you who might want to follow along at home, or if not following right now, if you want to be confident that you can do this yourself, um, click here. And you will come to a folder that I use with my students. RVVE stands for Rome, a Visual and Virtual Empire, um, a course that I teach in which one stage I ask my students to make 3D models. Uh, you should be able to download any of these zip files. If you can't, that's because I mucked up the permissions. Let me know. I'll fix that. Um, download these files. You will see that they do not tell you what they are pictures of. Um, that is because I asked my students to figure that out. And so perhaps you'll have fun doing that yourself. Um, I think we're gonna, we're gonna work with uh, set one today, so I'll give that away. Um, really up to you whether you want to download, download that or download another one of these or send me an email saying, what is that? Uh, I'm happy to, uh, happy to uh, clue you in on that. Um, all right, so if we come out, to, so I've already downloaded that, just to prime the pump a little bit. I have fired up Remake. This is what you see on the Mac. What you see will be different, I'm sure. Um, if we click on Create 3D, Local Drive, you will see I have already navigated. Perhaps I shouldn't have done that, but uh, it was in Downloads. Already navigated to this set of folders. And actually, let me go out and, uh, oh no, here, I will um, load them all. I think it is the case that uh, you will start to see them all. They are um, pictures of uh, Constant, the Roman Emperor Constantine's over life-size foot as now on display in Rome. Um, I hope this is enough for you, for me to highlight aspects of this set of photos. How many do we have? We have uh, four, eight, 
12, 16, 18. One aspect. We're at the we're at the minimum of what you might need to get a good model. Can you do it with four? Yeah, um, uh, but um, 250 is what WeCap will let you load. Be willing to need to take 250 photos of an object to get a good uh, to get a good model. Um, uh, what you should notice is that there's a lot of overlap, and I'm I'm you know to different angles of details on these things. Imagine um, you know a full set would just be more more and different angles of this object the more you feed the computer the more overlap you feed the computer the more it can figure out what it is looking at let me now click on create model uh, i'll give it a name c oh it doesn't i'm, I'm trying to put apostrophe s yes, doesn't like that c and it doesn't like spaces c foot um I'm going to go standard and uh, let's turn, uh, let's see what happens if we turn auto crop on and smart texture on uh, and then I just click start and it's worn around and it's going to sit here and that number is going up. Oh, it was going up pretty nicely, pretty quickly. Uh, that's cool. Last night it took a whole lot longer than that. Um, okay. Wow. Nice. Uh, I was going to take the time of that slower number um, to come out to photo scan and point out that the cloud is great and i clicked various auto things and you're thinking scratching your head what are those um let's go uh, under the hood a little bit and um imagine what it is that we make is doing and we can come closer to investigating that process if we use photo scan uh, which is where you have more control because it's an application sitting on your computer and there are many more boxes to check and such. Um, parts of the workflow, however, are the same. You see this menu up here, workflow. I'm going to add a folder. Again, I've got, um, here, I'll come up to downloads, RVVE, photo set one, I will choose. I have now let photo scan know that these are the images that I want it to work with. Um, unlike in Remake where it's just like make model and then you sit back. Um, here, the workflow is divided up into these stages. Now that I have told Photoscan what images I am working with, I can click on align photos. I've set the accuracy to low for now. Um, this is really just a time trade-off. Set it to highest and it takes longer. I highly recommend letting giving it time giving it more photos and more time gives you a better model but let us uh, for now i'll just click on low and it will whir away detecting points it's looking for overlap in the images cruising along and we're almost there estimating camera locations these blue squares rectangles show where I was holding the camera when I took that photograph. I will admit, when I first realized this how was how easy it was, some five or six years ago when I first made a model, I was like, wow, that's incredibly cool. Uh, I sort of understand the math, but I really don't have to understand. I understand the principle, but I don't have to do the math. And that's very, very cool. I should be able to click on here. And you know, the pink is highlighting which one it is. And maybe some of them didn't align or they're further out here. Let me uh, see what's, yeah, um, uh, click around. Uh, I hope you all think that's reasonably cool, except it's not useful at the end in terms of what we were trying to do. I have a and for now, I'm going to turn the cameras off. I have what is called a sparse mesh of points. So you can already see there's a little bit. If you know that it's a foot, you can sort of see that it looks like a foot. Uh, next in the workflow, I want to build um, dense cloud. That is, I want it to, using those known points that it thinks are right, and the more information in the photos, go back into the photos and try and calculate more points. 
And um, let's go back out to Remake and see how it is doing. Uh, waiting in queue. Ah, so that was just the upload, and now it's taking a long time. All my take back all my excitement. Um, uh, it's going to take a long time. So I'm very glad that I'm in Photoshop. Um, great. Uh, photo scan, I mean. Um, all these names sound the same. Um, there. Okay, so no change in what you see on the screen, but a change in these icons up here, I can move to showing that dense cloud. And yeah, you start to see that we have, oops, I've moved in too much, you know, to use its own metaphor, a cloud of points. It is that cloud of points is quite dense. I will indicate that it is also assigned a color to those points which we will also use the terminology I established before of vertices. Um, but we don't yet have edges and faces. So we have a cloud of dense points, but let us build mesh, which is jumping ahead a little bit, or rather implied in that menu item is create edges between the vertices, those edges define faces and assign a color to those face, we're moving in the right direction. Build mesh. Uh, everything, I got everything on low, again, just so that it runs right here. Um, let's see what happens with pause. Again, remind myself that my enthusiasm was entirely misplaced. We're only at 1%. I will now reveal to you that yes, I did this already so I can show you what the we make uh, outcome uh, looks like. Um, let's go back here. Uh, this is, I will pause and say, if you use the highest settings and you have many pictures, it is not unusual to have a machine or a desktop machine with 128 gigabytes of RAM to put in you know, a couple of hundred pictures and to let it run for four or five days after you've run through all the process. Um, this can take, uh, photogrammetry can take a very long time, but you will soon see that, that uh, you get to choose. You know, how good of a model do you need? Um, and if people are doing uh, it as assignment in class, you know, I work with your teach uh, with your instructors in terms of how much, how much detail they want, um, but you can prove that you can do this. Um, in a timely fashion. So generated a whole lot of information, um, decimating the mesh. I don't know if you caught that. You could go back and look at the video. Again, no change on the screen right now, except for the ability to show um, icons. That doesn't look very good at all. If we move in here, yeah, we have a mesh and it has assigned color to that. Uh, it looks terrible. In fact, just showing the the, uh, vertices with their color that looks better what's going on here we don't have a texture yet we don't have that photorealistic texture that really allows um, the human mind to think that it's looking at a quote-unquote quote real object let us build that so let us use the photos over here to build a relatively small texture that will do a better job of applying the color of the oversized, over life size marble model of Constantine's foot to our very, very rough underlying model. Wait just a touch. And um, again, no direct screen until I click over here. You can see it's saying textured and there's my model. Um, somebody will be able to go back and tell me how long that took. Uh, but only a few minutes, and you know, we can make out the vein that was being sculpted, uh, the toenails, um, details in this. Uh, we were to, we to have the whole thing, we would be talking about the head that's associated with it. Uh, again, I don't want to go off on a tangent on Roman archaeology. We would be talking about Constantine's recreation of the Roman Empire. Um, uh, but a 3D model lets us associate it that with the craftsman, craft personship of creating this 
this thing. And again, it would look even better if we took more pictures and let the computer work for longer. Um, I will come out to remake and click on foot.com, the one I made, uh, the one I made yesterday in remake. And you can see that it has done the same thing. The angles are all off. There's lots to talk about how this is not the real world. It doesn't know what up and down is. It does not know the size of these things. Um, I would have to put a ruler and rescale the 3D model to that. But again, this is just the merest introduction of the flow that you can download my pictures or you can go take pictures yourself on that front. What you're seeing is pictures that I took with an iPhone, I think with an iPhone 5 or 4, does not need to be a fancy camera. Do you get better results if you use a fancy camera? Yes, but in terms of capturing useful representations of these objects, uh, you can go do this with your own camera. So I am very glad I got to that point, um, even though Remake is still whirring away off in the cloud, 21%. We'll see whether we get to the end of it or not, but hopefully you believe me that we're going to end up with this kind of result. Um, OK, I just want to go back. Um, OK, uh, we are at a point where, um, without in any way suggesting that I have taught you how to make 3D models, I hope I have showed the workflow such that in more or less conjunction with your own instructors, you can go do this yourself, either re using Remake, a word on that, they will ask you to sign up for an account and it's a slightly complicated world, or using PhotoScan, send them an email asking them for a 30-day license. Um, it only costs $59 for, for an educational license. This is really a, one of the better deals in, in actually useful software. I'm a huge open source fan, but I don't mind paying $59 for really useful stuff. Um, uh, you can go do this. Let me go back up. I'm going to go out to here and just do a little bit to close the loop. Um, allow me to collect myself. I have nine minutes left. Uh, let's see what I can do. I'm going to say export model. I'm going to, and let's go up to just um, my uh, home account right here, and you'll see it kind of messy. I've got a variety of things up on here. Uh, knowing that um, two weeks from now you want to work with Collada files, I'm going to choose uh, Collada as my output. Uh, we'll see whether that works. I hadn't quite intending on doing that, but let's find out what happens. Um, I'm going to save that. Export texture, yes. Uh, vertex colors. Um, I'll leave it like that for now. This is a little bit of an experiment. Allow me to fail in front of you. I hope that's, that isn't what happens. Let us just confirm that um, in my home folder, if we sort it by date, yeah, I have two files. Two files. OK, going to go back out to um, Sketchfam. Click through on British Museum. I am already signed in. I have made an account. I am signed in so that I see upload. Choose file. SFSH. Those two files that photo scan exported. I'm a little bit off the track of what I intended. Let's see if this works. Um, continue. Uh, C foot, model name, description. Uh, I'm just going to put some stuff in there. Um, uh, click on continue. Please wait while we process your model. You will be automatically redirected when it is ready. We'll take this opportunity to go out and see how, still at 21%, but just as I did that, I got a flash here. Yeah, so I have now put on Sketchfab. Um, I'm going to edit the 3D settings. I can do things like make the background not quite so hazy. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I want to go to annotations. And uh, it says, 
double click on your model to create an annotation. I will do that. I will call, say, Wikipedia page. Then new window, Constantine, Wikipedia, um, boom. I got a lot of windows open. Of all the things that go wrong, I suppose this is a good one. This is of all the things that go wrong. This is one Constantine the Great. We're at the disambiguation page. That's wonderful. I put that in here. I it's there. I say okay. Now um, publish, save and publish. I get a short link. I paste that in. Um, that model is now on the internet. I mean this, not it is. It is on the internet in the same way that the British Museum models are up on there, and it has a nice little annotation that will click through to the Wikipedia page. Um, accessing 3D data, either because you download it from the internet or because you make your own. Um, doing things with that, such as adding an annotation, sharing that 3D data um, by putting it on Sketchfab for now or any other mechanism that you choose to do or that, is, that, or that becomes available in the future. Um, a slight, I hope this is the slightest hint of um, the, a, a way that um, 3D data can be important to us as we think about material culture. Um, there is a tremendous number of things that we have not engaged in. How good are these models? How good do they have to be for, in order to be useful? Are you really, really trying to directly recreate the model um, uh, on a conservation basis? Or are you using it in narrative, perhaps a little bit of a, as I've been doing now? Those are all things that you'll have to think about it in terms of uh, in, ter in terms of um, how you're uh, creating the model. What do you do if you have done it with photogrammetry? Please think about sharing your original photos as well as the model itself. These are all very very important things to think about. I hope they are themes that come up in the rest of the class, whether you're talking about 3D data or any data, how do you share it? What are the right, right formats to use? What are you sharing? How are you enabling other people to follow in your tracks or to take a different path with the data that you have done, whether it's a different technical path or a different intellectual path? How are you enabling that? Um, always keep that in mind. I will go back to my, yeah, I'm gonna close this. Close this, close this. I will come down to the bottom here. Uh, in three minutes, obviously, I cannot. Um, I'm not even gonna bother to click on this, but I hope that uh, I can briefly allude to um, the current political situation in Syria, uh, the mix of rebellion, and a uh, response to that rebellion and ISIS that is leading to a human tragedy. Um, but archeologists have um, hopefully, respectfully found a way to introduce also concern about their cultural heritage. Um, we care more about, or I, you know, I care more about the humans than I do about the archeology. span I give all that up. However, there's hope, uh, I, I give up the archeology span to say, to save the humans. But um, hopefully there's, we, ideally we would like to do both. But uh, material culture has been destroyed. And so I just bring your attention to the use of photogrammetry and the, the crowdsource, the, the acquisition of, of many photos that have been taken of monuments in Palmyra, a site in Syria before those monuments were destroyed, how they have been used to recreate these models. Um, it is a tragedy that this has to had to happen, but is a good thing that it is happening in this context, that we haven't entirely lost these models. Um, uh, I also put in links to um, people 
uh, the, a um, model of, of that, that a part of that arch that is traveling around, which is again cause fascinating conversation about the use of printing out 3D models and to generate conversation and um, how that is being done. That's uh, that is this link here. Um, uh, I would super super quickly show that um, I enjoy making models of sundials. Rent not rendering models of sundials. The Berlin Sundial Project has put up a model of a double sundial from Delos, and I have set it up so that I can cast the shadow across it. Here we are at dawn with the sun over to the right, and I am showing on an equinox, that is when the sun passes uh, at its, uh, when, when it is, the, the days and nights are of equal length. Obviously, this is, I'm just scratching the surface, but yes, the mere display of 3D models is useful, but the more that they can, that they are done, that is done in such a way that they can be integrated into other ways of communicating aspects of the ancient world, as the see the sun go across, and now in the evening, just before sunset, the shadow is on the western half of this sun sundial, and then the sun goes down. Um, those are good things, and then um, I encourage if. if Instructors would like to have their students be on the cutting edge of uh, controversy in 3D in museums, have them have people look at the other Nefertiti and um, that the model of the famous bust in Berlin of Nefertiti and the, and the model of that, that that came out on the internet. Uh, and I just completely leave, at this point leave it to you as to whether or not that is a good or a bad thing. Down here at the bottom, I put a links to just a very few um, free or almost open source um, software, except I mentioned Photoscan and Remake, which are certainly not um, free in their full blown versions. Um, there's a lot of software out there. A lot of it is not terribly easy to use, but if you take the time and remind yourself that every, every software is gonna have a different key combination, you can get a lot done um, on your own. I hope I've given you a hint that you can do that. I hope I've given you a hint of why you might want to do that. Um, and I welcome feedback from either students or um, instructors as to how people might be able to move forward. I will stop screen sharing so that you can see me again. And I welcome questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Preston. There's a question from uh, from Anita. Uh, Gabby, I cannot hear. There's a question from Anita. Um, in oh, wait, the oh, I need to. Oh, here. Sorry, I need to turn up my volume again. Uh, now I can hear you. Yeah, I was. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. There's a question. There's a question in the comments here. Um, uh, yes, I see. see them. Yeah. Um, uh, people, I don't think people on YouTube can't see that, so yeah. I will read it. Yeah. Um, uh, Anise Fiera, Fiera asked, my apologies for the name, Sebastian, uh, thanks for the presentation. A question, in your experience, how does the scan software deal with pictures taken with the distance between uh, the camera and the object um, exceedingly well? It's in fact very important to vary the camera. You know, I, I don't have one right now, but, but you know, zoom in and take close-ups, zoom back, rotate, move around. Imagine that if I have a camera, I'm not like some strange creature here. Um, imagine that, you know, and, 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 and rotate the camera. You want to give the algorithms that are finding overlap between pictures different perspectives. If everything lined up at perfect 90 degrees, without diving into the math too much, there might be more than one solution. But if you give it lots and lots of different angles, there's only one optimal solution for the for the world that it's looking at, and you saw the, the computer can figure that out quite remarkably. So variation and difference. This is an opportunity to say that making a 3D model of an object is a or a or a site, a room, or whatever is a wonderful way to look at that object, to look at that thing, to think. What am I trying to, and what am I want to make sure that I get? And if it's everything, you will realize how many different angles you have to go around. Yes, it's a computer and it's a one, ones and zeros, and one might think that there's a functional output, but you as the person doing it are engaged in what quickly becomes craft. And you do it and you make the model and you see where you didn't 
where you miss some things and you go back and do it again. And then after your fifth or sixth time, you get good at just walking up to an object in a museum, not touching it, not getting it too close, but, but just, you know, firing away and making a model. And I will say, as long as I act as if I am respectful of the fact that I'm in a museum environment, I've had guards look at me, but I've never been stopped. And so um, that is a, that, that, you know, I, I'm, Please, that museums are out there now letting people take lots and lots of pictures, make their models. And when I do, I work across from the, from the Metropolitan Museum in New York. And when I put up a model, I tweet at them and they seem not to mind at all. And the Getty seems not to have mind. So um, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great thing. And that's where it sort of, it used to be the museums didn't want you taking pictures, didn't want you sharing pictures. Now they want you taking pictures and sharing them. They like the social media. And I'm glad that, you know, 3D modeling is being sort of sucked up into that world, that approach, and that, that, uh, that's a good thing. Cool. You you mentioned Sebastian um, that it'd be good for people to share the photographs that they made the um, the scan from, as well as the as well as the model itself. Um, do any of the the sites that host three D models um, also host photographs, or would you would you put a photograph somewhere else? I don't believe they do. It's such a quickly changing world that um, you know somebody might have decided to do that. I think uh, something like um, Sketchfab is going to be concerned about the file space. Um, so yeah, um, you know, that's where one starts to think about, you know, if, if one is, is one is taking one's data seriously and the effort one put into it seriously, one wants to archive it and one is perhaps, you know, in an academic context, talking to one's institutional repository about how what how they can take on the you know via one's library perhaps or however that's set up in your institution how they will take responsibility for the long-term storage of what can be many gigabytes worth of files so um i understand why sketchfab does not want to be in that business um and so talk to somebody whom you have a relationship who is in that, that not even business, that serve it, serving that, playing that role. But a very important question. In the um, Visions of Substance document where two readings are from, Adam Rabinowitz has a fantastic article that, that, that um, covers a wide variety of, of aspects about using 3D models and talks about the importance of that. And then other people have emphasized that. So yeah, yeah you know, um, here I get to say, Share your pictures, and then I get to say, uh, "Not quite sure how you do that." So yeah, I mean, where uh, another motif that I hope comes out in the course. You know, uh, Gabby, you will know this, but you know, how is one providing long-term access to digital data? I'm, you know, I hope we hope people are happy that that is, you know, front and center. Second thing, here we are talking about that, and it's really, you know. Find your own way, find your own relationships that get you, that allow you to project your scholarly work far into the future. Um, yeah. But it would be nice if there, if, if, if there were common ways and, and re reliable ways. But, you know, don't put them on your Google Drive because make sure that's not, that's going to go away. You know? So, again, I have no, this, I have no better answer than anybody else trying to do this. Thanks. To answer your question that you asked earlier, um, briefly, the the photo scan process that you went through with the five different steps, including mm -hmm. stopping and talking about it in between, took about six minutes on the YouTube video. Oh, great, 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 great. So, so again, you know, came up with with a with a not very good model, but if you have two hours to spare, you can get a good one. And 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 um, the the alignment part on high doesn't take very long. That could get going, but the uh, building dense mesh. Um, I will leave that going overnight. And I have a computer in my office that is very frequently making photo scan models or rendering videos like the one that I showed you. And allow me to apologize if that whole sundial thing was just way, way too fast. Um, I will say that at ISA, we are uh, on the brink of the opening of an exhibition, which will have many sundials on it. I am making animations for those. So a subsequent version of that video that I showed you and others will be available online with more explanation as a use of 3D models. Um, uh, uh, they're cool. I mean, I'm making them. I shouldn't say that. But, it's, you know, it's cool to watch shadows go across things. Uh, and I'll, I'll, maybe that can come out, can be announced when it's, when it's a 
when they come up, a future person or Gabby, you, I'll, I'll highlight to you when, they, when those become available online. Cool. And feel free to share them with the Synarchesis list as well. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Thank you. Just in passing, if there's no other questions um, popping up, I can't see if there's any questions on YouTube. I don't see any, but um, you talked about Wikipedia's use of 3D. Um, if you have opinions about how they should be handling 3D, um, I believe that that discussion is ongoing. And I, I, um, I may mention to some people involved that I think I probably already have mentioned that, that you know you're one of the people they should talk to. But, Right, and, 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 and truly, um, yes, this, those discussions are ongoing. I haven't actively participated in them. That was not a critique. I completely understand sitting back and waiting um, for, for this, this, this to go on. But I've been asked. Wikipedia, that, that's a great place to put it. I'm sure it will become a great place to put 3D models and uh, look forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think there's going to be a workshop on that on, to, to discuss that very soon. So we'll, yeah. whether virtual or in, or in the flash. Great, great, great. So, good. Okay, if there are no other questions um, on here, um, I suspect if I try and refresh YouTube, it'll start making noise at me, but um, nope, I don't see any comments on there either. Um, I may not have set YouTube up so you can leave comments, in which case I'll have to fix that for future weeks, but um, that's... Uh, that's something that happens. But in that case, um, I'll say thanks very much, Sebastian. Um, uh, on behalf of all the people watching on YouTube, and we'll um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll follow this up in discussion, and uh, and see you all see you all next week. And everyone else is. I was very quickly say it was, uh, thank you for the invitation, and yes, I look forward to what's coming what's coming down the pipe with other people. All right, take care. Cool. Cheers. Bye, and thank you.